Good morning and welcome to Cabersham Baptist Church's first service of 2022. Happy New Year everyone! My name is Tamsin Wilson and I'm a member of Cabersham Baptist Church and this service is going to be led mainly by members of my family. Colin is on holiday until Wednesday. After the service we'll be having a Zoom meeting, the details should be appearing on the screen below. And next Sunday I look forward to seeing lots of you at our usual service uh, meeting at Queen Anne's School next Sunday the 9th of January at 10.30am. As we begin our service now let's pray. Dear Father God, thank you for the new day and the new year. Please be with us now as we worship you separately and bring us back safely together next week to worship you in fellowship with one another. Amen. I thought it appropriate to read you the covenant prayer to begin the new year. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your disposal. And now glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Colossians 3, verses 16 and 17 says, Let the message about Christ, in all its richness, fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to, to all, all at CBC. CBC. We wish you a happy, healthy and peaceful New Year, full of God's blessings. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort.
I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and, I am persuaded, now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. On the second Sunday after Christmas, we traditionally celebrate the visit of the wise men to the baby Jesus and their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. They certainly were unusual gifts for a baby boy born into a lowly family in Judea. I don't know about you, but from time to time I've wondered about what happened to these gifts. The Bible certainly doesn't give us any clues, and although I understand there are some legends and theories, there's no real evidence. I wonder if Mary and Joseph even appreciated these gifts. I'm sure from time to time, perhaps even in the last couple of weeks maybe, you have received unwanted gifts and had to face the challenge of thanking the giver whilst wondering what on earth you're going to do with them. Sometimes it's because we've received two gifts the same, other times it's because people have decided to ignore our wish lists and give us something of their own choosing that isn't quite right. I'm sure everyone giving a gift thinks they are being generous and helpful, but sometimes a gift can be something of a burden. I have a particular recollection of one Christmas when I was a child. We just installed a pond in our back garden and my grandparents decided that they wanted to give us something to go with the pond. So on Christmas morning, we had the joy of tearing the wrapping paper off to uncover a set of garden gnomes. I apologise to anyone who loves garden gnomes, but these were really not something I can imagine anyone wanting in their garden. They were nasty and plastic and frankly rather ugly. My mum straight up refused to have them on display in the garden. However, you don't like to cause offence particularly in the family. So for some years afterwards, whenever my grandparents arrived, the cry went up, put out the gnomes. I don't know if my grandparents ever worked out that their gift wasn't fully appreciated. Perhaps they thought we loved them because we had kept them so clean that they looked like they'd just come out of the box, which of course they had. Anyway, they're no longer around to ask. In our married life, Tamsin and I have developed a system for dealing with unwanted gifts. In our house, we have a place called the re-gifting drawer. This is where we put the presents we've received that aren't actually any use to us. The following Christmas, we open the drawer and see if there's anything that we can use as a gift for someone else. It can be quite an effective form of recycling. You just have to be very careful not to return the gift to the person who gave it to you. Perhaps Mary and Joseph were into re-gifting. I'm sure the gold, which symbolised the kingship of Jesus, would have been useful. Unfortunately, I don't think the wise men were expecting a beautiful handwritten note explaining what suitable item had been purchased with the funds. In practice, I suspect it was very helpful for Mary and Joseph, as they were undoubtedly quite poor, and they were about to take an expensive journey to Egypt to flee from Herod's persecution. The two other gifts would be classic re-gifting opportunities in our household. I understand frankincense was used in religious worship at the time of Jesus, so symbolised his deity. 
perhaps a good gift for Uncle Zechariah, father of John the Baptist and a priest in the temple. Myrrh is used for embalming dead bodies, which as a gift symbolises Jesus' mortality as human and speaks of his death to come. That would be a really tough one to get rid of. I'm not sure anyone, particularly elderly relatives, for whom it's most likely to come in handy would really appreciate being given that. However, re-gifting should be something that all Christians do. We've all been given gifts to allow us to serve God, and it's our responsibility to pass on these gifts by using them to serve others and to further God's kingdom in our community. However, the most important Christmas gift is, of course, the good news of Jesus. Come to earth to be our saviour. This good news really is a gift worthy of re-gifting all year round. It certainly shouldn't be, be confined to the re-gifting draw for a year, only to be bought out next Christmas. As our reading from 2 Timothy says, it's something to be passed on. Lois passed it to Eunice, who passed it on to Timothy himself. Later in chapter 2, Paul instructs Timothy to entrust the good news to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others and pass it on themselves. Regift it so that it can be regifted again and again. If you're fortunate enough to have received the gift of the good news of Jesus, if you've accepted that he is God and King, come down to earth to conquer sin and death and bring us into relationship with God, if that is you, then I urge you to pass on this gift. Too many people in Caversham and beyond have yet to hear of this amazing gift, and it should be our mission as a church to give it to them. However, we should acknowledge that the good news is sometimes a hard gift to give. Some people will reject it and return it to us unopened, not even bothering with the re-gifting draw. Although God's love is a gift available for everyone, it can be a challenging gift to receive, as it challenges the recipient to acknowledge their own sinfulness. We must pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to open our, the hearts of our friends to receive the gift and give us the opportunities to present it to them. And the bonus is that the good news is actually a gift that gets better the more we re-gift it. It doesn't get the corners battered in the re-gifting drawer, it doesn't deteriorate by being passed on second, third or even fourth hand. Our own testimony of God's goodness to us adds to the good news and the gift gets better for us the more we pass it on. Dear Father God, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, help us to share this gift with our friends and family and our community here in Caversham over the coming year. Amen. Oh, and finally, if you'd like to receive a large bag of potpourri next Christmas, then do feel free to drop us a hint at any time.
we come now to our time of prayer. Thank you to Sheila for sending us this first prayer, a prayer for the new year. Lord, give us this day forgiveness for the past, courage for the present, hope for the future, and in your infinite mercy, come to meet us in our infinite need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray for our congregation. Father, uh, we pray for all those among our congregation who are unwell at this time. Pray particularly for those who have recently had medical procedures and are recovering. We pray that they will recover swiftly and you will bring them back to full health. We pray for those who have suffered with COVID in recent weeks. Again, may you bring them back to full health and may you protect those around them from catching the disease. And Lord, we pray protection over all those in our congregation from this terrible disease. May they be kept safe. May they be protected from getting it. And if they do get it, may it be mild and of no long-term consequence. And Lord, we pray uh, for the building work that is ongoing in our church. We pray for the builders. We thank you for their skills and expertise. We pray that you will keep them safe. We thank you that there have been no accidents so far, and we pray that that might continue through to the end of the work. We pray that they will be kept safe from COVID and that the work will be able to proceed on time so that we are able to be back in our building in February. Amen. And we pray for the world and the uh, community around us. Father, we thank you uh, for the wonderful world in which we live. We thank you for our community around us. And we pray for our friends and our families uh, in this challenging time. We pray that you will lift up uh, our uh, community. Pray that you will help us to come together uh, and uh, come to know you uh, through your church here in Cambridge. We pray for everyone who is suffering in our community uh, at this uh, time, particularly those who know of loved ones who are unwell with COVID. Uh, and Lord, we pray for wisdom and, uh, and safety. And we pray particularly for our government and those in authority that they may, may make wise decisions about the way forward. And Lord, we just pray that this year ahead may be one of recovery and renewal uh, for our land uh, and our world. May it be both a recovery of health, but also a recovery of spiritual well-being. Amen. And finally, I would like to use a blessing that again Sheila sent to us. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with, the hope, with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen.
you for being with us for this online service. Let's finish our service by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.